come back, a rainbow after a storm battered Oats Warren, uprooting trees and damaging houses, but ending years of drought. The town was in a state of disaster due to low dam levels. Following the massive storm, the Kuos Robbenheimer Dam is overflowing. This is good news, of course, for farmers. Let me take you to ENCA's Monique Motlock, uh, who, has been who has been tracking that particular story. And Monique, uh, you spoke to a farmer uh, in the last hour in the area there who was not wasting any time in terms of preparing uh, the Lucerne uh, fields there on that farm. You are now outside the municipality, I think, uh, in that area. Uh, what's the picture from that side in terms of the response in as far as the damage um, caused to people's lives and livelihoods, uh, as well as, of course, the opportunity that the rains present for the farming industry in Old Zoran. Yes, Silas, I decided to stop here just to um, uh, speak about something that the municipality mentioned. They said that although the course at Obenheimer Dam, which provides uh, potable water to Oatswoden, although the dam is at over 100% capacity, they still are urging residents not to throw away water-saving habits that have become a way of life for residents over the last couple of years due to those low dam levels. Not too long ago, that was the Obenheimer Dam was standing at about 30%. And because of this, the area was placed in a, um, under a state of disaster. And um, even though the municipality is now considering lifting water restrictions, which is a good thing not only for residents, but also businesses in the area, um, the municipality is still cautioning residents to use water sparingly, especially as temperatures rise. We know that here in Oatswoden, being a Klankarua town, temperatures can reach up to 42 degrees, and that's in your February months. Residents say that the heat we're feeling right now, as you can see, it's quite a sunny, um, hot day, um, and it's not even one o'clock yet, that the heat we're feeling now is nothing compared to what they usually feel in February. And it's for this reason that the municipality is really urging residents to continue being responsible, as they have been over the last couple of years, and to not take this precious resource for granted. You mentioned the fact that we've been speaking to residents who have been negatively impacted by that storm over the last, um, on Sunday and Monday. We um, heard from some residents today who we spoke to yesterday whose homes were either destroyed or severely damaged by trees falling on top of them, that some of those trees um, are still lying on top of their houses. You'll remember the one woman we spoke to yesterday in Hope Street. She had two massive blue gum trees falling on top of her house and they haven't yet been able to assess the damage. She says those trees are still on top of the house and um, municipal workers have been working uh, just bit by bit trying to remove that tree safely so that the, the houses surrounding hers aren't damaged. And we'll be keeping track of what's happening with these homes, those 81 homes that were damaged, to find out from them maybe in a week from now how things are looking, whether they've received any type of assistance from the municipality because many of these families don't even have insurance for their household contents, let alone for the structures that have been damaged. And now onto the flip side, those farmers who we spoke to, like the one farmer we just spoke to an hour ago, Lopshu Kutsia, as you mentioned, he has wasted no time in toiling the land. He says this is the first time he's been able to um, get a tractor and, and get some workers to plough those, uh, those Lucerne fields. Um, it's the first time in about six years that he's been able to do that. And it's all, thank all thanks to the rains that they, the, the good rainfall that they've been experiencing over the last three weeks. Recap for me very quickly, um, Monique, this statistic. It's extraordinary, at least in my mind. You are saying this dam that we're talking about was at one point at about 30 percent and it's now at a hundred percent. Not even 100% to us. Um, up until yesterday, we heard it was at 108% and we wow. visited the dam. Um, we, we weren't able to uh, take you live from there because there's no signal around the dam and it's quite a breathtaking sight. It's completely filled and when we visited one farmer earlier this morning on his farm, we saw streams 
flowing um, with water, even going over the roads. He says this is the first time he's seen this. His child, who's three years old, it's the first time he's seen um, the, the, the river flowing. And it's quite a sight, not only for the farmers, but also the farm workers who are so reliant on the agriculture sector, doing well, and also towns like Oatswood and being heavily reliant on its agriculture sector um, when it comes to tourism and uh, the economic side of things. So really a win-win for, for almost everyone in these towns like Oatswood and Ladysmith and, and the surrounding towns here in the Klein Karua. Yeah, I guess it's a blessing and a curse at the same time. That is ENCA's Monique Motlock live for us from Oatswood. And it's a blessing for the farmers and it's absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. Those numbers are unbelievable, from about 30% to 108%, that particular dam uh, that Monique has been talking about. But at the same time, uh, the devastation that it has brought on not uh, to be ignored. Fortunately, we are told there have been no lives lost in that situation.